Well, the price of gold continues to advance today. It's hanging around those all-time high levels, around $2,100 per ounce. That doesn't mean things are favorable for companies that mine gold. However, take a look at the gold mining index. It has underperformed the move in bullion. And in some cases, the producers are sitting at multi-year lows. How can that be, and how does it get reconciled? Let's bring in Martin Predier. He is an equity research analyst at Veritas, and he joins me now. Thanks so much for joining me, Martin. Thank you. So I started by asking two questions. How can that be? How does it get resolved? Why aren't these gold producers, uh, why aren't their stocks reflecting broadly? Why aren't they reflecting the move in gold? Well, the problem is cost. I mean, if you, if you look at what happened uh, in the, the last year, the cost of, you know, 10 miners that I follow uh, went up 9%. And what is worse, in the last quarter, if you look at the last quarter compared to the same quarter last year, it went up 18%. So there was even an acceleration of the cost increases coming through. Uh, when you look at uh, two years, it's about 18%. Mm. Uh, so basically, gold has done very well, uh, but the miners in general have underperformed uh, the gold bullion because of that. But don't you think that that is... That it's unlikely to grow at 18% their expenses every year, that at some point that stabilizes? Well, they, they, they're, grow, they're growing normally at nine. I mean, okay. the, if 18 was a quarter, or you know, 18 in two years, it gives you about nine. Um, I would say we're hoping it, it, show, <laughs> it slows down. Uh, and when I look at the, at the miners last year, uh, the ones that did better were the ones that were able to control better the cost. So there was a very strong correlation. And in that sense, I like uh, Wheaton Precious Metals because Wheaton doesn't have an increase in cost. It's a streamer. Yeah. The cost is determined. And, and so last year, it performed, I think, 20-something percent, uh, much better than most of the miners. And I think this year, uh, it will perform well. It has started slow um, because basically they reduce what they had told the market they were going to get in terms of right. volumes. Uh, they still have some growth, but not as much as we expected at the beginning. So it had a little bit of a dip. Uh, and, and it, well, it's it coming almost down. recovered yeah. fully from that. Yeah, and it has recovered. And I think, you know, over the year, uh, we'll show that leverage, that, that fact that they don't increase their costs. So you, you like that streamer, not a Franco Nevada. No. Why? Um, I can guess, but you tell me. Franco Nevada has um, less gold. I mean, they has oil, has iron ore, has all these other stuff that is not gold and doesn't behave like gold. So, uh, you know, you can, you can be gold equivalent of water if you want, but it is not going to behave like gold. So that is a problem. And they have the Cobra Panama issues as well. Well, the Cobra Panama issue, yes, I would say that is probably sort of discounted in the price okay. at this point, mm -hmm. uh, almost fully discounted. I mean, there is some value there. It's an option. But I don't think uh, Cobre Panama is coming back for at least three, five years. Wow. Um, because, you see, they're going to win in the international um, uh, court. I'm pretty sure about that. But then to collect the money, that's a completely different ballgame. Um, and probably you won't be able they to being collect. first quantum. Yes, they first be, quantum, yeah. um, or, or you know, one thing is that you have a favorable, um, you know, ruling from the court. The other one is that you are able to actually get money out of that right. uh, out of that country, or that you're able to uh, restart the mine, which might be a possibility. But for that to happen, well, you probably need a. a you know, Panama, the Panamanian people to change their view mm -hmm. about uh, Cobre Panama. And you probably need a referendum to, to have a political backing to do something like that. It's very extreme. I mean, they never had uh, these strikes uh, that they were so savage yeah. as they were over there. Uh, so, so you will need some political backing, and I think it will 
basically you'll need a referendum. And of to course, there's them. elections coming up. Uh, so it sounds like you like stories that are a little less messy. Um, so wheat and precious metals, a, a cleaner story in terms of producers. The only one you you seem to really like um, is Agnico Eagle. Agnico and Lundin Gold. And, and Lundin Gold. And, and is that just a simple cost story? Uh, Landin Gold is, is uh, one of the most efficient producers, has very low cost, uh, and uh, it's in Ecuador. Uh, uh, it's a one mine, but it's finding a lot more gold. Um, so, so the cost is, is really interesting. Uh, it's a first quart quartal kind of uh, uh, gold company. Okay. And, and you know, they, they, they're finding more, so they're increasing the, the life of the mine, they're increasing the, the mill size, the, the recovery, so I'm pretty positive about that, and it's cheap. That's the other part, uh, is, you know, valuations are, are really uh, interesting. Um, in terms of Agnico, uh, of the large miners, I would say uh, is, is the one that has done the better, mm -hmm. in terms of cost, in terms of stability, uh, had less problems. Uh, has more most of the mines in Canada, which is good, uh, and um, you know the valuations are, are reasonable, so we like it at this at this uh, point. Let's talk Barrick and Newmont, which you're not recommending. Um, you know why not? Let's talk Newmont. Don't you want to get a little contrarian? Um, the stock is it's so beaten up, bouncing around four year lows. You you get a nice yield. Gold's at a record. Why can't Newmont catch some of that? Well, I was I was more hopeful about uh, Newmont uh, two or three months ago, and I thought about that. Uh, but I was very disappointed with the new um, guidance that they, they gave us. So, for instance, they bought um, Newcrest at, at a yeah. big premium, 40%, 45%. And then their first guidance in terms of new you know, Newcrest assets is 18% down from what new Newcrest was producing. So that's that's not you know that doesn't make sense. Why are you buying at a big premium and then for assets that are not producing that much? Right. Um, and uh, even in the other assets uh, they, they they basically guided down. They basically guided down uh, from from what I expected. And so, do you think more could be coming? I mean the stock has pulled back significantly already. I, you know, the question is, that's what they're doing? Is that fully reflected in the stock? And now can can little surprises to the upside um, get things going? Uh, uh, yeah, I... Uh, they, they, they have been... Uh, Their the track record in the last two years in terms of cost has been atrocious. Mm. Uh, so the last two years, if you add them... Uh, the cost increased 36% or something like that, which is one of the worst in my, in my sample. Um, so, and I think last year was like 18%, and the previous year is sort of similar. So it's, uh, I have to see more. You have to see more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving them like, you know, a blank check at this point. Um, I, I'm, I, well, there's always time, but, but they, they have to show that they can control cost and they can do better than, than what they have recently been doing. And, and the last question, just 30 seconds left, but I also want to ask about Barrick because um, the CEO, Mark Bristow, has been very vocal. I'm not going to overpay for deals. I don't think I need to do uh, deals. Uh, yes, they want to get into copper and, and grow that copper um, production. They talk a lot about being disciplined on, on cost. Where's the knock? They haven't been, they talk about it, but they haven't been disciplining costs. So when you look at the numbers, uh, the last two years it was like 30%. Uh, Increase in costs. Yeah, combined for yeah. the two years. I think, uh, I don't remember exact number, but double digit last year for sure. Uh, I don't know if it was 13 or something like that. Um, and uh, in copper it was even worse. In copper the, 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 the cost increase was like 50% last year. Uh, so, yes, I believe they have good assets, but they had a lot of issues. Uh, the ramp up of, of Pueblo Viejo uh, yeah. was a disappointment. Uh, the Nevada mines performed, underperformed. And when you look at the guidance, the guidance was lower than expected as well. So, again, they're not coming back saying, okay, this was a bad year. We're coming back to what we promised before. We're coming back to a much lower level. Um, 
at, at this point, I, I don't find it that attractive with, with this valuation and with these cost increases. I, I have to see, again, uh, much better cost control. Um, they have good assets, uh, theoretically, but that's only good if, if you're able to demonstrate that, you know, and, yeah. and report numbers that, that show that you have the good assets. All right.